Hey, what's up guys? John here. Elon Musk and Tesla are issuing massive layoffs after what feels like unlimited price cuts on the Model Y and the Model 3 and the Model X. The EV maker plans to lay off more than 10% of its workforce in wake of the falling sales. Over 14,000 Tesla employees were laid off nationwide. And many of these electric vehicle companies are doing the same exact thing. Many even uh, gas companies, you know, companies that historically were gas, you know, Ford, GM, Chrysler, all these companies are issuing big layoffs. Why would they be doing this? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a walk and talk around Tokyo and talk to you about what I think, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening here in Tokyo that I think are gonna be coming to America. You know, for example, and also before I even dive into this video, please hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate the people about what's going on in America's economy, in the world. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Take a look at this. You know, it's, it's so clean in this city, so beautiful. But one thing many people don't realize is not a lot of people drive here because the transit system is so good. It almost doesn't make sense. And to own a car here, you're not allowed to own older cars. In America, you can, you can own anything you want, right? Well, here, the cars can't be any older than uh, five years. So they have to be relatively new cars, and it's mandated by the government. So you can't drive older cars. So you have to buy a newer car. Newer cars are more expensive. And so because of that, you'll see a lot of you know, Bentleys and Maybachs and things like that because people that can afford to have a car here you know, are buying a really, really nice car. Whereas everyone else to just say, you know what? I'm just gonna take public transit because it's only a couple dollars. And you literally put the public transit on your phone and you just walk around and you just tap it. And uh, it takes almost no time to get anywhere. If you wanna go from uh, Tokyo to Osaka, you take the bullet train, which goes between 187 and 200 miles an hour. And you're there in a couple hours. If you wanna go anywhere else in the city, you can do it in the course of a few minutes. You can basically dart on the other side of town and 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, the trains run every, feels like every minute or two. And so when you start to look at all of this, and then you see what's unfolding in America, Business Insider, you know, CNBC, all these outlets all came out years ago, 2017, 2018, saying that 80% of Americans will not own a car in the next, you know, from now, it's the next uh, five and a half years, right? So 80% of Americans. And so when you look at what's happening with Tesla, these are the companies, why are they doing this? Well, they're doing this because sales are down in a very, very, very big way. Consumers do not have more income. A lot of people are upside down on their cars. They can't qualify for loans. And you know, they simply, they don't need all of these employees because you know, they're, the business aren't, their businesses are not profitable enough to where they can keep them, right? So they're gonna start issuing massive layoffs. And uh, it's a really, 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 a unique catalyst that we're walking into in society because in America, because what we're gonna to start to see next is gonna see a lot more ripple effects all throughout, all throughout the uh, economy. Because if people, let's say for example, it does happen and 50%, 6%, 70%, 80% of people don't have a car, think about what that would actually mean. And a lot of people are gonna say, John, there's no way. It's not gonna happen, there's no way. You know, car insurance is at a 50 year high right now and it's gonna to continue to rise. Gas prices are continuing to go up. You have the cost of labor to fix your car continuing to go up. Everything is going up and now there's new mandates by the government right now to sell electric vehicles. And so what's gonna happen? Well, the same thing is happening in Japan. As they begin to phase in more and more and more electric vehicles, the uh, electric vehicle prices are gonna to continue to sink and these gas cars are going to be so expensive only the rich are going to really be able to have a gas car in the near future because you know to service and i've had luxury cars um to service a luxury car is super expensive and that's what it's going to feel like servicing a honda or one of these gas vehicles in the next couple years it's going to feel like you're servicing like a bentley it's going to feel like you're servicing like a maybach or something like that that's where car prices are headed uh, for services and so if you think about this, many people are upside down on their cars. The average American took 125% loan to value, 125% loan to value on their car that they probably paid 20, 30, 40% more for in the first place. 
So they might be upside down 40, 50% on their car. And meanwhile, you have repossessions skyrocketing. What's this gonna mean? It's gonna mean people are gonna open their car door out, they're gonna open their apartment door, they're gonna open their home door, look in the driveway, see a car with a $50,000 loan on it that's worth 25. And they're gonna say, you know what? Forget it, forget it, I don't need this car. And so what's gonna happen? Supply and demand, supply and demand. You have all these car manufacturers issuing layoffs because people aren't buying cars and you're gonna have a lot more motivated lenders and, uh, and sellers trying to unload this inventory. And so it's just gonna be a race to the bottom inside of the car market. Tesla knows it, Ford knows it, GM knows it. Um, we're walking into a completely different world with, when it comes to transportation. What they forecasted years ago, I mean, even Forbes forecasted this, and what they said was, uh, in the future, everyone's just gonna be taking Lyft and Uber. That's what's gonna happen. In the future, they're gonna be taking Lyft and Uber. In Los Angeles, they're working on a universal basic income pilot program right now to where you cannot use it on your car expenses. You can only use it on electric e-scooters, Lyft and Uber. Like that's, that's the only way you can use this UBI. And so the same thing I believe is gonna be happening. The gas car is gonna be for the rich, the rich person, the person that has really, really high means. It's gonna go from a place where you can work at Starbucks, you could be a janitor, you could be a teacher, you could be anybody in America with a driver's license and you can basically drive a car. That's gonna change, just like it's, it is here in America. See how many, or in Japan. See how many cars are on the road? Very, very few. And uh, it's early in the morning, it's like 7 a.m. This is a time that most people be going to work. Right, I'm gonna show you the busy intersection and you can see exactly what I mean. But look, here's the metro, right? Metro is right here and the metro will take you basically anywhere you wanna go, right? So you have one car, you have a, a trash truck, a little trash truck, one other car, another trash truck, right? It's uh, almost no cars out here, like almost no cars. Maybe you'll you know walk in a really, really, really busy main intersection and see 20 cars, 30 cars, right? That's what's gonna be coming to Los Angeles, San Francisco, Philly, Boston, Chicago, as these, this car market continues to crash and these electric EV makers are mandated by the government to sell cars. They're gonna slash these prices, slash these prices. And so, uh, yeah, we're walking into something really, really big here. I think it's gonna be one of the biggest, biggest bubbles because the last couple of years, everybody and their mom, brother, sister, and uncle wanted to own you know, a nice luxury car. And now, and now we're gonna be walking into the period of let's give back the car, right? And a lot of people are gonna be forced to give back these cars. And it's gonna be like Japan, look at this. Busy intersection. You have a trash truck and two other cars. Seven in the morning. Seven in the morning in the middle of, uh, and we'll turn the other way. You have one car that just turned there. And it looks like a transportation vehicle. In Japan, yeah, it looks like transporting oil, right? So, and like three other cars. This is in, this is the middle of Tokyo. Imagine what Los Angeles would look like, San Francisco, or any of these other major cities. You would have hundreds of cars, you could barely move. You'd barely be able to walk in the city. And so when you see all these car manufacturers issuing these big layoffs, issuing these price cuts, it's not because the economy is booming and they're looking to increase sales. It's because the entire auto market is going through a massive change that I think a lot of people in America think is a theory. It's not actually gonna happen. It's happening, like it, it's happening. There's new laws that are already being worked on right now to ensure this change is going to occur. And that's what we're gonna walk into. As we begin to see interest rates continue to stay higher for longer, at the very least, they're, they're probably gonna go up. You look at the inflation report, you look at what's happening with oil prices, look what happened uh, in the treasury market. Interest rates are actually gonna be going up. And so you think about that. How many people are gonna be able to make good on their car payments as credit card minimum payments continue to increase? Because the interest rates have a large role in the minimum payments on a credit card, right? So you, you look at it. Interest rates going up on their credit cards. You have insurance going up, gas prices going up, repair costs going up. <laughs> labor costs are basically softening or going down, the job market's changing. This is all a recipe for, uh, 
for a really big problem. And when you have the average American paying, <laughs> like the, uh, the average new car payment is like 740 bucks a month. Then you have insurance, 200 bucks, 940 a month. Then you have gas, you have other expenses. You're looking at like 12, $1,300 a month to drive a car, to drive a car. Now, how many people are gonna be able to hold on to that uh, going forward? They're not, because they're gonna start seeing all these lease deals, all these electric vehicle deals for 200 bucks a month, 300 bucks a month, which are already happening. And then it's just gonna be this slow phase in to where ultimately people are gonna slowly start moving away from their current car to maybe I'll lease something, to maybe I'll do the Lyft or an Uber, maybe I'll move into a city so I can use public transportation to reduce expenses. It's gonna to continue to move in this direction, just like it is in China, and just like it is in many other areas. Um, we're gonna see mass migration to big cities over the next decade, next two decades, at levels in which many people cannot imagine. Because it's gonna be a lot cheaper to live in a big city, unlike what we've experienced over the last couple of decades where if you live in a big city, you're doing really well financially. Over the next couple of decades, if you live in a big city, it's likely gonna be because economically it makes the most sense. What do you think about this situation? Do you think the big cities in America, if you have millions of people living there, millions more, the streets will look like this, where it's basically so clean that you literally could lay in the street and not get dirty, right? The same thing is true with the metro. The same thing is true with basically a lot of uh, uh, Japanese cities is they're so immaculate and so clean. What will the cities look like in America? Well, I'm gonna tell you, probably very similar. And the reason for it is because they're gonna be investing heavily, heavily into cameras and infrastructure. And uh, now over the next couple of years, it's gonna fall apart, in my opinion. A lot of these cities are gonna fall apart. And then it's gonna, it's gonna start to look more like China. And, uh, and then these cities are gonna actually start to clean up. So it's gonna be uh, a world of change coming to America, coming to the a US driver, coming to uh, the US economy. What do you think about this entire situation? Drop below, let's have a conversation about this. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Catch you next video.